Hello ladies and gents, I am Anadiffin, and this is XCOM 2. In the last episode, we fended off an attack against one of our, or our only, hub in New Mexico. The Resistance HQ. So, we've got, ooh, intact structures, Commander. After recent success, members of Resistance in New Mexico have brought us reports of activity that we may want to investigate. Not now, um, but I will want to do that. <clears throat> Avenger plotting new course. Yes, you will. Ooh, proving grounds are ready for the skull jack whenever you give the word. This is a view the facility. Welcome to the proving grounds, Commander. It seemed like a good idea to isolate some of our more experimental concepts, especially when it comes to weapons development. Yeah. Experimental arrow. So Illyrium core. So we have two cores. So we've seen aliens using a variety of exotic ammunition in their weapons. By using Illyrium cores we've discovered from, recovered from the battlefield, we could develop new ammo types for our weapons, which would likely be more potent than any of our current munitions. An experimental grenade. Aluminum cores can be highly unstable given the right circumstances. And assuming we don't push it too far, we could fabricate new types of grenades that would easily surpass the effect of, of what we got right now. I'm gonna go for the ammo. I'll have the team get started immediately, Commander. I'll let you know as soon as we've made progress. And stuff engineer. Um let's sign on here. Yes, please. So I've no one staffed engineers, so it's Good. For most of our soldiers, the living quarters on board the Avenger are a step up from the conditions they've had to live with on the ground. <laughs> Fair enough. Soldiers, engineers, a couple of engineers, only one scientist so far. Very well. Um, hmm. These findings will likely prove crucial to our ongoing efforts, Commander. Hybrid materials. Ooh. With limited resources available to outfit our troops up until now, they've recovered. They've been have too much. Let's try again. With limited resources available to outfit our troops, up until now they've had to make do with whatever makeshift armor Shen managed to piece together for them from various uh, scrap materials. Relying on methods that might otherwise seem outdated, we've developed a means of producing a multi-layered nanofiber weave capable of withstanding direct impacts, as well as any traditional armour, without the added weight. Our troops will still be, have to exercise caution, even the nanofiber has its limits. It may best be suited to our forces who rely on agility over pure stopping power. In any case, I imagine our soldiers will be pleased to see any improvements over their current equipment. Now let's go over vest and plated armour. Nice. Uh, I think it's a put a dime in the alloys. I think we should probably get some of these autopsies going. Hmm. Though I was never witness to one myself, countless observers attest to the existence of a much smaller, less intimidating variant of the sectoid that took part in the original invasion. In the time since, this new being, the product of clear genetic manipulation, is now a familiar face to our forces operating in the field. Yeah, they're considerably tougher than the original sectoids. Which is interesting to say the least. Supply drop. Priority message coming through, Commander. Putting it on screen now. Except the transmission. You have made considerable progress against the aliens over the past month, Commander. I hope that your ongoing efforts will only lead to further success. 
Ooh, new, new stuff available. Commander, we have intel suggesting the aliens are working on developments that threaten our ability to stop the Avatar project. We can conduct guerrilla operations to disrupt one of these efforts, but we'll have to choose carefully. We don't have the resources to intercede everywhere. Hmm. So five weeks for the next till the next retaliation strike. Hmm. That's a UFO Hunty Avenger. That's not good. Very well. The resistance has a hidden cache of resources stashed outside of Advent's reach. But that means we'll have to fly over and scan the area if we want to recover this stuff for ourselves. That's a useful one to go for. I'm going to probably remain. Three days. Avenger plotting new course. I know it's the useful one, but this has got a limited number of days left. I have made a number of interesting discoveries, Commander. Let's have a look. Sectoid's rapid physical evolution over the past 20 years is a testament to both the aliens' mastery of genetic engineering and their pursuit of advancement, regardless of the risk. Filming the autopsy exam conducted by Dr. Richard Teagan, acting science officer. Although my direct surgical experience is limited, the alien's genetic manipulation of the species previously catalogued as a sectoid provides a certain familiarity in relation to human anatomy. While the earliest documented accounts of sectoids on Earth indicated examples no larger than one metre in height, the specimens we encountered today are nearly twice that size. Knowing full well that aliens continue their efforts to integrate human and alien DNA, my findings are only reinforce the notion of continuous development process. This larger sectoid variant has even greater proportion of human genetic material, selectively combined with the intention of improving the otherwise limited physical capabilities of the original, with enhanced psionic capabilities and overall greater strength. I'd say they have succeeded. Ah, Tegan. Ooh, a mind shield. Part of art. Psychic artifact rendering soldiers completely immune to any negative mental conditions, including panic, mind control, stuns, and disorientation. That is useful. Probably just go faceless. I am at a useful. loss for words to describe the difficulties we have had in attempting to handle this creature, affectionately known as the faceless to our troops. The nebulous form of its physical structure, including a pliable semi-solid outer layer, seems to be slowly degrading now that the creature has expired. There is also a pungent odor that only seems to grow stronger as time passes. Messy. New orders, Commander. What can I build? Armor. So two troop corpses and thirty supplies. Let's build one of those. I think. Is it actually a loadout? Or is it a. He has a thought. And one of it's an armor enhancement. Weapon upgrade. Just so scope on it. Three reloads. It can be placed but not re reused. Ah. Seems like it could be a bit of an issue. Anyway. Just give the word and I'll get started, Commander. Research is proceeding as yep. planned, Commander. 
back to here. Commander, we've got local resistance forces waiting to make contact, but we'll have to make the first move. Commander, I will do. to aid in your efforts, we have gathered additional resources and staff at resistance headquarters for your use. For the Mexican regional draft. Yeah, new supplies good. Welcome, Commander. Just getting bonus method assistance. Of construction. Hmm. Let's get another scientist. Don't feel need for another engineer just yet. Avenger plotting new course. Scan here. Experimental app. Oh. Use rounds faction to micro shards. Granting 20% truth strike. Hmm. Talon rounds. What's a dark event? Ah, those. How do the talent rounds? How do the talent rounds get given? I habit of scratching that scar on the back of his head. I wonder if anyone made sure his chip was actually removed. Weapon upgrades. Or is it a part of the loadout? It is talent rounds. Talent rounds would be good for like the sharpshooters anyway. I wonder if I'm just gonna do any combat in this one. I am sure you will find the results to be as intriguing as I do, Commander. And you research. I wondered how the aliens could conceive of such a being. Is there another world out there filled with these shape shifting creatures or are they merely another construct of alien genetic tampering? Early reports from the resistance referring to, the, to an alien creature said to be capable of shape-shifting were initially dismissed by local cell leaders who attributed the sightings to combat stress and malnutrition. It wasn't until our own forces engaged with the creature that we successfully confirmed its existence. Surprisingly enough, the description of the creature from those early reports was quite accurate. With a varying height of up to 3 meters, the specimen currently referred to as the Faceless is one of the most unusual internal structures I've ever encountered. Where one might expect to find a skeletal foundation, we instead see a series of malleable shitten like structures providing various points for the expansion of several equally unusual fluid membranes. The membranes in question are responsible for the Faceless's extraordinary ability to mirror the form of a human. In recirculating key si key cellular combinations via an elaborate internal structure. The faceless is capable of forming solid shapes while also mirroring colours and textures without phys physical sampling. As of yet, we have only seen evidence of the faceless attempt to imitate humans, but not other species or inanimate objects. Whether or not this is a limitation of their genetic makeup, or is an intentionally, intentional man manipulation of their abilities by the aliens, we cannot say at this time. Uh, Tegan. And the Mimic Beacon. The Mimic Beacon generates a holographic decoy to draw enemy attacks for one turn. It is deployed like a grenade thrown to the site where the decoy will appear. Kind of handy. Hmm. Knowing that my past surgical experience is limited, I am sure the crew appreciates that I hone my skills on fallen advent forces before triaging our own wounded. To the uninitiated, the common advent trooper is seemingly human. The aliens have disguised this most glaring divergence from the human form with a carefully designed helmet. Okay. That's Without access to refined good. fossil fuels, power is difficult to come by outside the cities. Even among the staunchest of anti-alien dissidents, Recovered Advent equipment is highly coveted. Indeed.
low scientists. So nothing is assigned at the moment. Throw into a grenade and ammo. We'll get started right away, Commander. I'll send word when the project is complete. Interesting. Let's continue scanning Commander, this. We have a priority message coming through. It looks like an encoded signal from the resistance. Patching it through to your quarters now. I will accept the transmission. seem your recent activities have gotten Advent's attention. Our unwelcome guests are on the move. Advent has been diverting considerable resources and personnel to covert facilities across the globe. The exact details of these operations are highly classified. However, they do have one thing in common. A single word that appears in all their files. Avatar. I believe the black site we had previously uncovered to be but a part of this Avatar project. Based on what we have uncovered so far, its true scope is far greater. This project is being directed from the very top of Advent, from a source I am still unable to determine. All attempts to uncover its identity have met with failure. It is time to take a more direct approach. Though we may not know the exact nature of this Avatar project, we can still disrupt it. We must root out these hidden facilities with the help of local resistance cells, disrupt our enemy's operations, and in the process, uncover the truth. Locate the source of this Avatar project, and then destroy it. Were the enemy to succeed in their efforts, I am certain it would mean the end for us all. I am confident you will take whatever measures necessary to eliminate this threat, Commander. That I will. We're tracking the aliens' progress on this Avatar project here. If they finish what they've started, it sounds like it'll be the end for all of us. Threat level unknown. Hmm. So good. Let's keep doing this. Excellent. So we're rookies. We continue making contact with this black site here. think I could have predicted this outcome, though it is intriguing. Despite a thorough analysis, I have yet to discover what, if any, advantage the Advent Hybrid Soldier's enormous eyes provide. Testing their visual acuity will no doubt prove difficult. The most public face of Advent security, the standard Advent Trooper serves in a first response role in areas of high public exposure, although rumours as to their origins have persisted for years, it's only recently that we have confirmed that they are in fact the product of a human-alien hybrid development. My initial autopsy indicates that the troopers were at one time entirely human, implying some means of gradual genetic enhancement without the rejection concerns that would normally plague these experiments. The body itself maintains the general outward appearance of a typical human, with the most crucial changes occurring in the cranial structure, it is my belief that the Advent Troopers received their orders, that is to say they are controlled directly through a sonic link engineered as part of the genetic modification process. As we first discovered in the field, the eyes are notably larger, perhaps as an unintended side effect, as they seem to provide only limited improvements to the Troopers visual acuity. The aliens have managed to disguise this glaring physical trait from the general public through the use of a cleverly designed helmet. Ah, Tegan. New item, Battle Scanner. Battle Scanner 
provides extra vision on the field, soldiers deploy it like a grenade, allowing it to be hit thrown into the hidden areas of the map they want to reveal. Any hidden object or disguise enemies will be revealed as well. And is useful. Resistance radio, by replicating communications equipment we've developed on the Avenger, we should be able to establish ground-based relays to further spread our reach. With wider coverage, it will be easier to reach out to some of those outlying regions far from HQ. That would be useful. Still, I kind of want to get magnetic weapons. Don't need a pad. It's a slow research, though. Don't research this. Work begins immediately, Commander. I'll contact you when I have a full report available. Can make contact with these guys now. New target. Hmm. Guerrilla Ops. That would be useful. I would like to do the Guerrilla Ops, but first, just finish off this. If we have a mission available that's reliant on time sensitive information. We can always finish our scans later, but failing to take on this mission could have serious repercussions for the resistance movement. I will do that. Setting course for Sector 8, Mexico. Well, I think I'll put do that next time, because this, this is the episode has been going for 20 minutes so far. So yeah. What I'll do, I'll actually end the episode here. I know it'll be a little bit shorter than the previous, but it will mean we can go straight into the next episode. So, thank you very much for watching this episode of XCOM 2. I am Anna Diffin, and I shall see you next time for that Gorilla Ops mission. But until then.